stop going around <laughs> Newport like you own the place, fondling the breasts of promiscuous women. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Don't no more. No more. Deal. Wait, you're saying not to do that, right? Right. So this is the line in the sand. I'm willing to take that step. Are you guys with me? I, I am with you a hundred percent. All right. No we more. Will. We're all going to make that. So um, I hope we're not alone. If you're joining with us, this is our new, this is our new, our new line in the stand. No more uh, fondling the breasts of promiscuous women. Or even being captivated by them. All right. Um, now that's tougher, yeah. but <laughs> <laughs> that's why we take captive. Every thought starts in your head. Starts in your mind. I mean, yeah. Somewhere in that <laughs> noggin it starts. Okay. So part. So um the theme for Wednesday, we're just gonna move past that and into the theme. Today is Wednesday, and we have question of the Wednesday. Question of the Wednesday, this is where we pose a question. We get back answers from you. The question was is if the world were perfect, you could make a million dollars a year doing what? What is it that you could make a million dollars a year doing? If you if the world was perfect, what is that thing? So, you get your answers ready. Yeah, I'll, I'll, Steve, I'll think get, about it. Get your answer ready. I was born ready. <laughs> <laughs> and as you guys get ready, we can jump right into scripture then. Sounds so, good. So. Um, Yesterday, uh, we went through uh, Romans 1, 8 through 15, and today we're actually only going to do two verses. Um, so we're going to do Romans 1, 16 through 17. So we'll start off uh, like we normally do, read the passage, and just chat about it together. Great. All right. So it goes like this. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith. As it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. All right. And that was Romans what? 1, 16 through 17. Awesome. Yeah. So one of the interesting things is shame. Shame for the gospel. Shame for... Who you identify as? Have you ever felt uh, any shame in your life, uh, Dave? Um, <clears throat> well, I've certainly felt shame in my life. Um, specifically about being a Christian, I would say I do remember a time where I was sort of committed to living, sort of doing whatever I wanted, and I thought it's better to not call yourself a Christian if you're not going to live it out. So I would basically deny if anybody asked, which didn't happen that often, but it happened uh, once or twice. We would say, hey, are you a Christian? And I was like, I better say no because, you know, I'm not very good evidence of it. But then it was like there was all these roosters around. <laughs> no, Did you kidding. live at a farm? Yeah, no. Um then How many was, times happened before you heard those roosters? <laughs> I, I don't think it happened uh, more than once. I think I said it once. And in my mind, that was because I was trying to be consistent. But as soon as I said no, it felt very wrong. It's like, you shouldn't, you shouldn't do that. And I was much younger. I was probably 22. I remember I was, in, I was living in Alabama at the time. And I was like, hmm. As soon as I said no, it's like, you might want to rethink this path that, that we're on. <laughs> so you asked me if I'd ever been ashamed. I only remember that one point. I think it's um, fascinating. That there's that, there's the famous podcast by the, um, who is it? Uh, the Duck Dynasty guys. Yeah, the Robertsons. Yeah, I've, I've listened to that a couple of times and it's called Unashamed. So yeah. it we don't live in a world that's especially friendly to people who are overtly Christian, <laughs> right? Um, it seems like that's okay to be, but you need to keep it to yourself. Kind of a vibe I get from maybe the culture at large. And so 
there's not really a shame, but there is maybe a, um, a caution for me historically to actually put myself out there and then, you know, make any assertions about my faith where it's not obviously asked. Like right now you're specifically asking yeah. me if I've ever been ashamed of my faith. Well, now I'm talking about it, but if it wasn't in that context, would I be having that conversation with regular folks? You know, I think in my life I've had different times where I have and have not been willing to. Yeah. Yeah. And you have, uh, you have a situation where if you're just a nominal Christian, right. someone that's just, they have gone to church at one time. And if someone asked them on a poll, you know, what, what religion are you? They might check Christian, but they're not necessarily running the good race, right? They're not, um, you know, working towards building their faith in God. Um, the idea that you believe in God as a actual thing, like a lion, uh, that, that faith that you would have in a God like that, uh, the things that it would cause you to do because of your belief, uh, that will probably put you in the category of sort of an outcast within our, our community. Right. Um, and so it's those times where you might run into a situation where, uh, you might get a little bit of pushback. Right. And so I think that's where it comes in. Like you don't want to be ashamed of your faith. You don't want to be ashamed of what you believe. Um, and you don't want to be ashamed of the, the gospel, you know, the good news of Jesus. So the question really can be is, are you putting yourself out there? Are you actually doing things that could make you maybe a pariah out in our culture? And, uh, and if you're not, you know, that's when I think in our culture, you might feel like you're more unashamed. So, yeah. So when you say doing things, Steve, like, do you have like an example? Like you don't have to overtly, like I, I think of, um, recently, actually not recently, uh, around February, right before coronavirus really started. Uh, I was in new Orleans for, um, uh, Mardi Gras. Yeah. Crazy party vibes, uh, out there, but there was, um, some protesters, I guess is the best word with the, um, religious banter of, like, you'll go to hell if you are here, and, and they're, they're kind of fighting with people. You don't, when you say do good deeds and show your um, Christian side, I guess is maybe the best way to put it. Um, you don't mean stuff like that, right, Steve? Say that, say that clearly again. For yeah, me. yeah, it was a little mishmash, but I'm just saying a lot of times, I think, from a non-Christian viewpoint, when you think of Christians, you think of those people on the street corners or in uh, protesting some sort of social movement. Um, and for me, I saw it in, in Mardi Gras uh, in yeah. New Orleans. So I don't see anywhere in the Bible where it says, hey, you need to go stand on a street corner and, you know, have a tattoo on your stomach that says Jesus saves and, and start screaming at people like that. Just uh, it's not in there um, that I can tell. However, um, I think that there's lots of things that the Bible clearly states that if we really did do this, uh, I think it would make us a little bit less uh, culturally acceptable, right? Um, you know, there's lots of things in our culture that they are slowly becoming um, less culturally normative for it's like there's the Christian viewpoint and then there's what most of our culture would say is okay. And so that difference, I think that you're getting some tension there. So if you hold to those beliefs, um, I think that the question is, is do you, do you have faith that this Bible and this, this word uh, is really truly what you believe, or is it kind of like you pick and choose what works for you, and then uh, you just you're sort of ashamed of what 
it says on other things that you probably don't agree with it mu as much. Yeah. Does that make no. sense? Yeah, it does. And I think for me personally, it resonates because I think of shame that you don't want to share brokenness with people. Like a lot of times it's really tough for me oh, to yeah. tell a friend like Dave or a friend like Steve that, hey, I'm not this, I'm not the perfect guy that you think I am, Dave. Wait, you're going to tell me this live on a show? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what what yeah. am I supposed to do with that? <laughs> yeah. Everyone Wait, can see my reaction and the shock yeah. on my face. Exactly. Oh, I'm no. sorry. Jordan, we're going to have to ask you to no longer be on the podcast. <laughs> if you're not perfect, you know, that's yeah. that's not what we're looking for here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we strive for protection. Uh, perfection, not protection. Well, I need to be protected from my vulnerability right now. But um, but yeah, so anyway, so the idea that like people are unwilling to share their brokenness kind of, I think, uh, contains Christianity a lot of times too, right? I don't yeah. think there's ever a problem where you can't... Um, that is unique to you. <laughs> like, I think you live on a pulpit if you think that your particular problem has never been seen in the history of mankind. You know, so I think sharing that, you'll be surprised how many people can relate or empathize with it. Yeah, the in life group we had the we talked about the verse that no temptation has. Um, befallen you or, or come upon you except that which is common to man and there's there's two ways to kind of see that that is that every single thing that you're um struggling with is common so you're not you're not getting some new new trick play that the devil is trying out for the first time on you uh the other thing is you can be sure that everybody who you maybe look up to or aspire to or, or admire them for their faith and their um, strength of character, they have also been tempted that same way. And so it's kind of like, yeah, we're all in, we're all in the same, in the same boat. And I know that for the majority of the majority of my Christian faith or my Christian life, I have not been committed to every single day uh, what we call running the good race, where every day I'm trying to commit today, I am going to do my best. I am going to run so that I can win. And I'm going to just give it what I got. And then tomorrow, it doesn't matter how everything fell apart the day before, intentions or no, I'm going to wake up tomorrow with all my shame and guilt and embarrassment for how somehow I went in trying and I just completely flailed, but today I'm going to do it again. And that's, that's a, this is a new thing for me. Um, just this year to be overtly like I'm a Christian and I'm going to try my best to live that out. I don't go out to the street corners and I don't push that on other people in ways that are uncomfortable to them. Um, because I don't know that I have anybody, anything to offer somebody in New Orleans at Mardi Gras. Um, if I went to Mardi Gras, I would be more likely to join the party <laughs> than they would be more likely to convert me than me to convert them. I would be like, yeah. oh, you guys are having more fun. It's kind of hot out here. You know, there's a tasty look, beverage hey, inside. Yeah. Look at everyone's laughing over there and having a good time. And I have this sign here that says you're going to, everyone's going to hell. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't, uh, I don't think that those people are listening to the voice of the Holy spirit and being obedient. I think they're kind of looking down on other people and they want to throw some of that condemnation their way. And that's not unique to Christians. You know, Christians get the bad rap because it's it, they make themselves sort of hokey, but you know, uh, vegans will try and say, Oh, unbelievable. The equivalent of that Christian on the street corner about people who will eat meat, right? Because that's their moral standard. You know, people who are pro choice, people who are pro life, people who, um, are trying to save the earth from global warming, people who are supporting a certain, uh, you know, want their presidential candidate, what they'll say to the people who are Trump supporters or what Trump supporters will say to Biden supporters. Like 
the Christian somehow gets the spotlight or maybe we just feel it because we're Christians. That's like, that's the crazy one. But it's like, no, anybody who feels morally strong about something, even if it's unpopular, they're going to stick their neck out and they're not going to be ashamed of their view. So I don't see why we should be ashamed of even our more controversial views. But if our goal is to win someone over, there's a, probably a smart way to do it in a dumb way. Yeah. I, I kind of have two thoughts on that, though. The, the first part is I don't think the people on those corners yelling are going to go to hell are mutually encouraging like we talked about yesterday. Don't think that's the case in, in that regard. So mm -hmm. I, would, I, I would be also disagreeing with it. Um, the other part is I don't know if either of you have an opinion on what is the best way, knowing that people might have a propensity towards Christians uh, to think negatively of it because we might say we might feel like we're, we're saying like all these um, contradictory things to current culture. What do you think is the best way to be a Christian um, today in terms of, as he puts it, um, revealed from faith for faith? Um, do you have any thoughts on yeah, that? I think, uh, well, uh, I think that what this is talking about is that we shouldn't be ashamed of sharing the good news of Christ with people, all right? And I do think that people are going to have a negative uh, response to that sometimes, right? Not necessarily that they should. I mean, it's it's good news. We're, that's why we're sharing what we have found that is, you know, the best news ever to happen in the history of the world. So, um, so from our perspective, this is something that we want to get out there. And from the Bible's perspective, they're saying, Hey, this is, this is what we need to get out there. Um, and it's saying that, Hey, you shouldn't be ashamed of that. Even if people aren't interested. The original question was, um, what, uh, how can you, if it's not going to be the crazy guy on the sign, how, how is it that you should project that out? Yes. And, and, and put yourself in a situation where you can have the message in the right way. And my answer to that would be, first of all, have the life that actually is consistent. Because there's a lot of people who go to church and who know the Bible. And I'm pointing all my fingers at me right now because I was raised with the Bible. Like I, I know a lot more than a lot of other Christians just by nature of a Christian school, Christian parents went to church every week by nature of my entire upbringing that set a course for a lot of Christian friends. I've got a big family, all Christian. And so what happens is you learn a lot of the right answers, but we're all tempted by things that are common. And when your life shows that your actual core beliefs, it's like if a, if somebody's yelling at you for eating meat, but you know that they own a barbecue restaurant, it's kind of like, well, you would just dismiss that person. And you, and, and the key is, you know, have a reputation, like have the life to back up what it is that you're saying. So nobody can say, at least they can't call you out for being a hypocrite. Cause that's the first, that's the first thing. So, yeah. No, that's great, Dave. That's right on. But the other thing is, is that we're not perfect, right? Like we, we are putting in a hard effort to become a better and better person and to follow the precepts that the Bible puts out there, but we aren't perfect. And the Bible, you know, says as much that Christians are, you know, sick like the rest of the world, but we're putting an effort to, uh, to, to, follow the precepts that the Bible puts out. Now, the other thing is, is that the th ideas in the Bible are so countercultural, right? Um, so if you, if someone does something evil to you, right? Like someone gets mad at you and, and says that you're putting, you know, the trash in the wrong trash can, <laughs> the Christian response to that is not that we are going to, you know, get mad at her and, you know, maybe we'll call her out on our podcast or whatever. But what we're going to do is we're going to be extra nice to her, right? We're going to maybe help her, you know, to carry her trash to her cans or whatever it is. We're going to go out of our way to be not only forgive her 
but to uh, just go out of our way to be nice for someone like that. So the Christian, uh, the Christian message that we're asked to follow, and it says a lot of these ideas in the Beatitudes, is that we are really trying to, as Christians, sort of become something new, sort of something alien to our culture. And uh, in a lot of ways, it sometimes feels like you're wimping out, right? Like someone, you know, is driving down the street and someone flicks you off. The tendency is to like drive in front of them and maybe slam on your brakes or do something that's going to really anger them back. But the Bible says, no, the vengeance is God's, right? So, so these ideas, these sort of countercultural Christian ideas, they are the ideas that I think are going to attract people to Christianity. So when we're living like Christ does, we're living in a way that people are going to be drawn to Christianity. And then as we share the gospel, they're going to have that hunger for it. You know, in the last last section we just read, it said that Paul was going to go to Rome and collect the harvest that's like ripe for harvesting. And I thought that was really interesting because it's like Paul is looking to actually, like he's going to go in and everyone's just like, ready. It's like, like a wildfire in California, right? Everyone's ready to just become a believer and he just has to go in and pick the fruit. And, uh, I think that's really exciting. So, yeah, 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 for sure. And I, one thing that you said, uh, Steve, that really resonated with me is I'm probably going to butcher it. Someone said it beautifully to me, but we, have holes and imperfections in us to let God's light shine through us out to people. And that's how we can show our love to them by showing God's love uh, through our imperfections. Um, So I would just, I would say as a whole then, don't be ashamed of where we're at and be encouraged by our faith and be encouraged by other people in their faith. And then also just live your life through kindness in a lot of ways that um, relates back to the, the Gospels and uh, the teachings and what Paul is saying right here. So um, definitely try to live that out today and be refreshed every day that you were talking about, Dave, um, to, you know, I could, I could fail yesterday. Maybe I even failed today on Wednesday, but I have Thursday. So always be encouraged by that. That is, as far as I can tell, that's the good race. That is getting up and running to win, you know, Everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize. And so run as if you will get the prize. All right. So question of the Wednesday. If the world were perfect, you could make a million dollars doing what? Ashley says being a full-time mom. Being a full-time mom isn't expensive. It doesn't. uh, I mean, it would help pay for it. It doesn't pay. Yeah, that would be. (laughs) Uh, how would you answer that question, Jordan? Um, you know, it's going to be a pretty nerdy thing, actually. I, I already, would, know, I already yeah. know what it is. Do you have a guess? Yep. Crossword puzzles. <laughs> you got it right. Yeah, I would uh, I would spend my time making crossword puzzles, you know, t- hanging out with Will Shorts and, oh. uh, for the New York Times, you know, just collaborating on ideas. I think Making them. Okay. Yeah. I, I just, Constructing I just, them. I just thought you wanted a million dollars a year to do the New York Times crossword puzzle. I mean, there are competitions out there. I've watched an hour-long YouTube clip of this big competition that Will Shorts throws on for fellow crossword solvers. And a lot of people that solve also construct, which is pretty fun. You watched an hour of people doing crossword puzzles? It's about the event, and it's about the people, Dave. (laughs) Wow. There is no excuse for us not to get some viewers then. (laughs) If you'll watch that. (laughs) If there's people, yeah. Huh? There's hope for us. Yeah. What about you, Steve? Huh? Did you ask me? Well, yeah. Um, well, I was going to say podcasting. That's a bit of a cop out because now after yesterday's, I kind of want to make a million dollars to make a go-kart as well. <laughs> 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 Since you're making a go-kart, I thought that would be something now I somehow want. 
What about you, Steve? You didn't answer. Yeah, I said go kart making a go making go karts. Making actually, go kart. Yeah, or having one. <laughs> I want to make a million dollars a year for having a go kart. <laughs> there you have it. Um, so this is I'm in a transition. That I would have always said that my goal was like like my dream thing money wasn't uh, a problem would be I would buy some machinery, right? Like I would buy like a water cutter or, you know, welders and turret punches and all sorts of machines that like uh, change metal. And so and then I would make pretty much anything I wanted with it. And uh, and just, you know, it would be a factory that makes sort of specialized stuff. Um, but it's getting to the point where I really would just accept a million dollars for the privilege to go anywhere in the world and meet Christians who are fulfilling the Great Commission, right? Like, just go out and meet them and just, like, record their stories. That would be that would be my dream job. Well, that's what you are starting to do. You've got your side project where you're um, starting to interview people like that. Yeah, yep. Yeah, that's what that's the direction I'm We just I'm have to get to... we just have to get the travel fund up to a million dollars. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, so, I hope, um I hope you can it, That's a real one, I think. Yeah, and it's been fun so far. So, yeah. Awesome. And the stories are amazing. You guys are going to love them. So, well, we'll look forward to that. Hopefully you can um when it's ready send us uh, you know, shout it out here. We'll we'll post the link uh, below to that show as well. Yeah. So, um, whoa. And the, uh, so tomorrow's theme, uh, is odd or not. So you send us, uh, things for Thursdays and, uh, there are things that might be strange, right? If you have an idea that might be strange, something that's in your life, something your neighbor does uh, that might be strange, you send it to us and we will be the judges, right? We will take on the responsibility to tell you if it's odd or not. Uh, and feel free to uh, send those to our social medias, like uh, The Good Race Show on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Or you can email us at thegoodraceshow at gmail.com. And we will feature some of these on next week's uh, show and tomorrow's show even. Uh, uh, for the, so that's tomorrow, tomorrow's tomorrow. show. I'm going to steal it. I've got I've got one uh, tomorrow. We're going to talk. We're going to you guys can vote on me. OK, uh, for that's tomorrow. The, there's nothing I love more than judging. you. Oh, trust Dave. me. It's um, I, I think I know how this is going to go, but. Normally there will be a three-way vote between you, me, and Jordan, but uh, today we've got Lauren in studio, so we can we can have that three-way. I'll put myself on the chopping block first, so then you know that'll give me. Um, you know, we're already penning in our unanimous decision. Yeah, I got you. We'll wait till you hear it. Yeah. That sounds fair. So, um, so this week, go out and be unashamed 